Let's take a deep dive into a topic that's become surprisingly controversial in the world of health, especially for those living with diabetes, oat milk. What really happens inside your body after just one seemingly innocent sip? At first glance, oat milk feels like the ideal solution for anyone ditching dairy. It's vegan, lactose-free, relatively low in fat, and tastes creamy and slightly sweet without adding any cane sugar. Or so it seems. Before we continue, I'd like to tell you about Daya Salon, a powerful blend of 13 natural ingredients, each carefully selected for their proven ability to support healthy blood sugar levels, enhance insulin sensitivity, and promote overall wellness. You can read more on diacelon.com. It's marketed as the perfect coffee companion and healthy lifestyle staple. It's in your grocery stores, cafes, and TikTok recipes. And for a lot of people, it's become part of their everyday routine. But here's the thing. For people managing diabetes, prediabetes, insulin resistance, or just looking to optimize blood sugar stability, this trendy milk might not be as innocent as it looks. What's hiding beneath that smooth, frothy surface isn't just oats. It's a high glycemic story unfolding in your bloodstream. And when we say after one sip, we're not exaggerating. That first mouthful kicks off a chain reaction that can have ripple effects through your entire metabolic system, sometimes within minutes. So what exactly is oat milk made of and why should it matter so much for blood sugar? It starts with whole oats, often rolled or steel cut, that are soaked in water, blended, and then strained to remove the bulk of the fiber and oat solids. What's left behind is a cloudy liquid that still contains the dissolved carbohydrates from the oats, primarily starches and natural sugars. That's key. Even if the packaging says unsweetened, the process of making oat milk breaks down complex carbohydrates into simpler sugars, thanks in part to enzymes added during processing. These enzymes are designed to make the milk sweeter naturally, which boosts its appeal without adding actual sugar. But your body doesn't care whether that sugar came from cane or oats. It responds the same way. After just one sip, your digestive enzymes kick in and the glucose from that milk begins to enter your bloodstream. For someone who is insulin sensitive, the body handles that spike fairly efficiently. But if you're insulin resistant or diabetic, your pancreas has to work overtime to release insulin and your cells may still struggle to absorb that glucose. The result, a blood sugar spike that can last for hours, followed by a crash that leaves you tired, hungry, and craving more sugar. Now let's talk numbers, because this is where things get really eye-opening. One cup of unsweetened oat milk contains somewhere between 16 to 29 grams of carbohydrates, depending on the brand and how it's processed. Compare that to almond milk, which usually contains one to two grams of carbs per cup, or coconut milk, which is similarly low carb. If you choose a sweetened or flavored version of oat milk, like vanilla, chocolate, or even barista blends specifically made for frothing, you could be consuming over 30 or even 40 grams of sugar in a single serving. And let's be honest, how many of us stop at a cup? A medium oat milk latte might contain 10 to 12 ounces of milk, which means you're easily looking at 25 to 35 grams of fast absorbing carbs in one drink. That's the equivalent of eating two slices of white bread or drinking a regular soda. And because liquids digest faster than solids, those sugars hit your bloodstream much faster than they would if you were eating whole oats. That quick spike is particularly dangerous for people trying to manage their glycemic response. Over time, these spikes can wear down insulin sensitivity, contribute to inflammation, and make it harder for your body to maintain steady energy levels. Let's add another layer to this. The glycemic index, GI, and glycemic load, GL, of oat milk. The glycemic index tells us how quickly a carbohydrate-containing food raises blood glucose levels, while glycemic load considers both the quality and quantity of those carbs. Oats already rank moderately to high on the GI scale, depending on the form. Instant oats, which are more processed, can spike blood sugar faster than whole oats. Now think about oat milk, essentially the liquid extract of oats, with less fiber and faster absorption. Some researchers suggest that oat milk behaves more like a high GI food than even instant oats. And because many oat milks are processed using enzymes that convert oat starch into maltose, a sugar with a very high glycemic index, it can lead to an even quicker rise in glucose levels. 
So even if the label says zero grams added sugar, that doesn't mean the drink is blood sugar friendly. When it hits your digestive tract, it behaves almost like a sugary beverage. And if you're consuming it with other carbs, like cereal, granola, or a pastry, you're stacking glucose sources and compounding the blood sugar spike, which is exactly what people with insulin resistance are trying to avoid. Now, let's be fair. Oat milk does have some redeeming qualities. One of the key benefits people point to is beta-glucans, a type of soluble fiber found in oats that has been shown to lower cholesterol, support heart health, and improve satiety. In theory, beta-glucans can also slow down the digestion of carbs, which helps to stabilize blood sugar. But here's the catch. Most of that fiber is lost during the oat milk production process. The straining and filtering remove the pulp, where much of the fiber resides. Some brands may add beta-glucans back into the final product, but unless it's explicitly stated, you're likely getting a minimal dose. And even when beta-glucans are present, they don't necessarily offset the sugar impact if you're drinking oat milk by itself or in large quantities. The reality is most people don't drink oat milk as part of a balanced meal with protein, fat, and fiber. They drink it as a standalone beverage or in a carb-heavy drink like a flavored latte or a smoothie with bananas and dates. That's a glycemic recipe for disaster. So while oat milk may technically offer some heart health benefits, they come with a blood sugar trade-off that needs to be considered. What's happening in your body after that first sip is more dramatic than it seems. The enzymes in your mouth and small intestine quickly break down those oat sugars, which then rush into your bloodstream. If you're healthy and insulin sensitive, your pancreas quickly releases insulin to usher the glucose into your cells. But if your cells are resistant, meaning they don't respond to insulin efficiently, the glucose stays in your bloodstream. That leads to higher blood sugar levels, inflammation, and eventually cellular stress. The body keeps pumping out more insulin to compensate, which can worsen insulin resistance over time. This chronic pattern of spiking and crashing, especially when repeated daily, can lead to fatigue, brain fog, increased hunger, and over the long term, damage to blood vessels, nerves, and organs. And here's the kicker. You might not even feel it happening. Unlike a sugar crash you notice after eating a donut, oat milk often delivers a stealth spike. It feels like a health drink, but it's acting like a high sugar food in disguise. Let's not forget about what else is hiding in many oat milk brands. To get that thick, creamy texture that people love, manufacturers often add vegetable oils like canola, rapeseed, or sunflower oil. These oils don't directly affect your blood sugar, but they do influence insulin sensitivity over time, especially if consumed frequently. That's because omega-6 rich oils can promote systemic inflammation when consumed in excess, tipping your body into a state of chronic low-grade inflammation. This inflammation interferes with insulin signaling, making it harder for your cells to respond effectively to the hormone that regulates glucose. So not only are you getting a carb load that raises blood sugar, but you're also adding ingredients that silently chip away at your metabolic health. The combination of processed carbs and inflammatory fats is one of the most harmful dietary pairings for people with diabetes or insulin resistance and oat milk, unfortunately, often includes both. But everybody's different, and some people may tolerate oat milk better than others. Genetics, muscle mass, time of day, recent activity levels, and even what else you've eaten recently all affect your body's glycemic response. Some people using continuous glucose monitors, CGMs, see only a moderate spike from oat milk, especially if consumed alongside a high-protein or high-fiber meal. Others see dramatic glucose surges, even from just a small latte. That's why personal data is so powerful. If you're managing diabetes or just trying to improve your metabolic health, tracking your response to oat milk, and comparing it to other beverages is an eye-opening experiment. You might discover that your blood sugar stays more stable with almond or flax milk, while oat milk causes noticeable peaks. The takeaway is clear. Don't just trust the label or the trend. Trust your own data. So if you do love oat milk and don't want to give it up completely, there are ways to enjoy it more mindfully. First, look for brands that are truly unsweetened and enzyme-free. Some even label themselves as zero sugar. These options may use a different production method that doesn't break the oat starch into maltose. Second, think of oat milk as an ingredient, not a beverage. 
Use it in small amounts, like a splash in coffee or in cooking, rather than as the main part of your drink or meal. Third, always pair it with protein and fat. For example, have oat milk in a smoothie with chia seeds, protein powder, and nut butter instead of pairing it with fruit alone. And finally, explore alternatives. Almond milk, macadamia milk, and flax milk are significantly lower in carbs and don't have the same glycemic impact, making them safer for people with blood sugar concerns. They might not be as trendy, but they're often a much better choice for your long-term health. So what really happens after just one sip of oat milk if you have diabetes, prediabetes, or insulin resistance? In short, your blood sugar begins to rise fast. Your body starts reacting to the glucose almost immediately. Insulin is released, and if your cells don't respond, that sugar stays circulating in your blood. Over time, these spikes wear down your metabolism, worsen inflammation, and make it harder to achieve glycemic stability. And what makes this especially deceptive is that oat milk is dressed in a health halo. It looks wholesome, but acts like a sugary drink. It's a classic case of a food being marketed as healthy while doing metabolic damage in the background. And unless you're aware, you might not realize how often it's disrupting your blood sugar rhythm. Every sip, every latte, every healthy smoothie adds up. So now that we've peeled back the layers on oat milk, looked at the ingredients, the blood sugar effects, the processing, and even the marketing, it's time to ask the real question. What are you really sipping on? That creamy, innocent-looking milk alternative that feels like the healthier choice might, in reality, be doing the exact opposite of what you want it to do, especially if you're trying to manage diabetes, stabilize your energy, or simply prevent long-term blood sugar issues. We live in a time where foods are more marketed than they are understood, where terms like plant-based, natural, and unsweetened lull us into a false sense of security. Because here's the truth, no one-size-fits-all answer exists. Oat milk isn't automatically bad. It's not poison, but it is misunderstood. For some people, especially those who are metabolically flexible or insulin-sensitive, having a bit of oat milk in a balanced meal might not cause a dramatic spike. But for others, especially those struggling with insulin resistance, prediabetes, or already navigating life with type 2 diabetes, even small frequent exposures to high glycemic beverages like oat milk can lead to a steady stream of spikes, crashes, and long-term inflammation. So what should you do? Awareness is your greatest weapon. Pay attention to what your body's telling you. If you're using a CGM, track what happens after that oat milk latte. If you feel tired, foggy, hungrier than you should be, or notice a craving for sweets soon after, those are all subtle signs your body's fighting back. And if you don't have access to a glucose monitor, just start noticing patterns and remember this. Healthy doesn't mean trendy, and trendy doesn't always mean healthy. Oat milk may be a plant-based darling, but for many people, it behaves more like a sweetened beverage than a smart fuel. If you're looking to protect your metabolic health, you deserve better information, more transparency, and real alternatives. Or if you're committed to oat milk, at least be smart about how and when you use it. Make it work with your body, not against it. In the end, this isn't just about oat milk. It's about being empowered. It's about stepping into your health journey with clarity instead of confusion. It's about asking, how does this actually affect me? Instead of blindly following food trends or wellness influencers. Because once you start asking those kinds of questions, you don't just take back control over your blood sugar, you take back control over your life. And that's the most powerful thing of all.